president. And like I said, it came kind of unexpected, um, and I felt kind of unprepared. But with the help of Mr. Noakes and this amazing board of officers, we've been able to have a really amazing year, and we've been able to help a lot within our community. Um, as president this year, I've improved my leadership skills and learned a lot about service and serving the community. And with that, I've developed a love for helping others in our community. And so because of my position this year, I've made the decision after graduating in May that I'll go on to pursue a career in nonprofit management. And that decision came a lot from what I've been able to do with National Honor Society. Um, so to the incoming inductees, National Honor Society is a great opportunity to lead and get involved, and it can greatly impact your life and your high school experience. So I encourage you to take this opportunity. So with that being said, it's time to introduce the four pillars of service. National Honor Society is built on the pillars of scholarship, service, leadership, and character. The pillar of scholarship will now be presented by our executive assistant, Haley Greer. Scholarship. Scholarship is characterized by commitment to learning. A student is willing to spend the necessary time to cultivate, cultivate his or her mind in the quest for knowledge. This pillar can only be achieved through diligence and effort. Scholarship means doing the best work possible regardless of impending reward. Next is service, presented by our treasurer, Macy Davis. The pillar of service can be reached in a variety of ways. The willingness to work for the benefit of those in need without compensation or recognition of any kind is a quality that is essential in NHS members. As a service club, the National Honor Society is highly concerned with giving its all to the school and community at large. Now our head chairman, John David English, will present the third pillar of leadership. Leaders take initiative to aid others in a wholesome manner throughout their daily activities. Leaderships, leaders sacrifice their personal interests in order to yield to their needs of their others. Leaders need wisdom and self-confidence to, to affect change in all aspects of their lives. Some examples of leaders can include, but are not limited to, leading, a group, leading in group activities in the classroom and in the community, being an officer in a club, being a primary member of a band or choir, or being a, the captain of a sports team. Finally, one of our secretaries, Sarah Davis, will present the last pillar of character. Character is what distinguishes one individual from another. It is the product of constant striving to make the right choices day after day. Students with good character demonstrate respect, responsibility, trustworthiness, fairness, care, and citizenship in all their actions. Now, my co-secretary, Count Shanks, will lead our incoming inductees in the NHS Pledge. At this time, will the inco incoming inductees please rise, raise your right hand, and repeat the pledge. I pledge to uphold the purposes of National Honor Society, to which I have been selected I will be true to the principles for which it stands and will always maintain and encourage the high standards of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. Thank you. You may be seated. Next is our Vice President, Brady Billingsley. Good evening, my name is Brady Billingsley and I am the Vice President for this year's National Honor Society. I'd like to c congratulate all of you for this um, achievement one more time because as Mr. Noakes says, it's not just another feather in your cap, which basically means that National Honor Society isn't just another club that you're a part of. In National Honor Society, whether you're a member or an officer, National Honor Society endeavors to provide opportunities to develop leadership skills, create community service projects, learn project management, 
and volunteer with worthy causes in the community. Blake Canby has worked in the title and closing industry since 1999. Before that, he was the in-house counsel and real estate manager for National Home Centers Incorporated, an Arkansas-based supplier of construction materials. Blake cites working alongside his team to help his clients as the most rewarding aspect of his work. Blake is a graduate of Springdale High School and earned two degrees from the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville, a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with an emphasis in marketing at the Sam M. Walton College of Business and a Juris Doctorate from the University of Arkansas School of Law. Blake is involved in many professional and civic organizations. He is a member of the Arkansas Bar Association, Arkansas Land Title Association, and the American Land Title Association. He was chosen as the Arkansas Land Title Association Title Person of the Year in 2011. He also served in leadership roles, including past president of Arkansas Land Title Association, past president of the Springdale Rotary Club, and past chairman of the Springdale Chamber of Commerce. Blake is married to Beth, and they have a daughter and a son. When he is not busy helping customers with their title and closing needs or spending time with his family, Blake enjoys golfing, cycling, and traveling. Please help me welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Blake Hanby. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I was telling uh, Knox on my way in, I was kind of trying to prepare my speech earlier today and had to go interview a young lady in our Fayetteville office, I've office out of Rogers a lot, and got ready to come down here and uh, realized I didn't have my speech. So I've typed this up quickly. There may be some typos, and I'll probably say them as I type them. But uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys having me. Knox uh, contacted me. I guess y'all were uh, needing somebody, and you thought maybe an old guy could impart some wisdom on some young people. I've been in, the, been in y'all's seat before over at Springdale. and. Um, for you parents and grandparents and family members that are here, congratulations to you, but congratulations to all you inductees. Um, it's quite an honor for you, and uh, I'm, I'm proud of you for, for doing so well in, in school. Um, my inter intro told you probably more than you wanted to know about me. Um, I'm the parent of two Harvard graduates. Um, our daughter Peyton graduated in 2013 from here. Um, she was in the top three or four of her class. They didn't, I don't know, they, I don't, they may still not do valedictorian. They didn't do it that year, um, but uh, she's in Rome right now in her last rotation for a pharmacy school and be a pharmacy, a doctor of pharmacy here in about a month. Our son Jake was a special ed kid here, had great uh, experience here with the special ed program and he got out of here at uh, 17 I believe. He goes to lifestyles down there and um, both of them are thriving beyond what we ever thought possible. So we're super proud of both of them and, and appreciate obviously Harbor High School for helping them in that. Um, as I was said, I'm a 1985 graduate of Springdale High, High School and fun fact, um, when I started high school, you know, everybody thinks they're pretty cool, right? When I started high school, I'd just gone to Florida with my parents. And some of you parents, kids probably won't remember this, but there used to be stuff called sun in. And you would put it in your hair to get your hair to bleach out. And so we went to the beach for a week, and I thought, no problem. My hair was brown at the time before it was white or clear or whatever it is now. And so I decided I'd put sun in, and I thought it'd be cool to go to school as a sophomore and have blonde hair and maybe look like I'd been at the beach. And um, I came to school, first of all, let me back up. I was not quite five feet tall. I was the second shortest person in our class, including girls, right? Um, but I came back to school and my hair, you remember, you know, Ronald McDonald, you ever seen his hair? Like it's crazy, like optic reddish orange. That was me about this tall with a big mouth and a whole lot of attitude. And um, it's, it, was, it was embarrassing, needless to say. Um, more on that later, but. So Knox told me about your five pillars uh, for the National Honor Society. Um, I want to speak to some of those, but what I really want to talk about to you as young students and young adults or, or adults to be is about balance. It seems to me that life's really all about balance. All the pillars are, are key to a great life, but you need to have balance in each to be successful. Do your best, if not great, you, I mean, to be good, if not great in all of them. I joke with people all the time and say, you know, I'm, I'm good at a lot of things. I'm not great at anything. But I try to have a balance of things that uh, it seems to be working out for me. Um, I mean, I wish I'd been born with you know, a genius IQ, did not. Wish I'd been 6'6", six, six, Michael Jordan style, did not. Wish I could hit a golf ball 350 yards, can't. Or run a 4240, can't. Or see music when I played it, can't. But I can do other stuff, um, just not, none of it's, none of it's great. Um, I've tried over the last 54 and 11 twelfths years, I'll be 55 this month. Um, to a certain degree to do good with a bunch of stuff and it seems to work out okay. See, God made all of us 
unique in our own way, right? There's, all of us are different in some way. All of us have different talents and different capabilities. And it's up to us to try to make the best of what you've been given and capitalize on those things. Truth of the matter is, you know, you look at social media and stuff and everybody tries to compare themselves to others and, and that. And if everybody was the same and everybody tried to be the same, it'd be boring. Nobody would be good at anything because everybody would be okay, right? That would be the norm. Um, everything would be dissatisfying because there would be, be no variety. So figure out what you're good at. Figure out what your strengths are. I'm sure you guys probably have some times where you kind of look at your strengths and weaknesses and some of that stuff in some of your meetings. Figure out what you're good at. Maybe a weakness and work on those that you can. But try to capitalize on your strengths. The real key, in my opinion, you hear this a lot, is try to be the best you you can be. It's a lifelong journey, and y'all are just getting started, obviously. On the uh, pillar of scholarship, I think balance means you challenge yourself to do more. I mean, I understand all of y'all are obviously intelligent. You're intelligent people, or you wouldn't be sitting here tonight. You're high achieving, so you probably don't need to spend much time here, but experience shows me that there are probably some of you that are super intelligent, that try hard to excel. There are probably some of you that are super intelligent, but try like me, or, I'm sorry, that aren't super intelligent, but try like me. And there are probably a few of you that are super intelligent and don't try that hard. And I remember when I was in high school, there were people that never took their books off the, out of their locker. They went to class, but they never studied hard. You got by, but that's really not the point, is it? I mean, we're here to get an education to be the best we can be. And do, something that's probably not really popular, but doing more doesn't necessarily mean all AP classes, right? I mean, AP classes are great. We didn't have them when I was here. The education is much better now, but it means challenge yourself where you can still have a balance. Part of that balance is service. To me, service is about recognizing the need, whether I see it myself or somebody else points it out and maybe ask me to help or ask you guys to help. It could be community service. It could mean community service at your church. It could mean serving a friend in need or somebody you don't even know. The key to service, I think, is never, and I think it was in, it's part of your pillar statement, is that I never agree to, to serve for personal gain. I agree to serve when I think I can help to meet a need, whether it's through my time, if I've heard this statement before, through my time or my dime, but to spend my time whenever I can serve and it can do somebody else some good. I always find out, though, that you're, way, you're rewarded way more than what you give, not monetarily necessarily, but in a way that feeds your soul, makes you feel good, makes you realize you did something good for somebody else. You can't quantify it, but you know you're a better person for helping somebody that needed a little bit of help. Maybe it looks like something for Habitat for Humanity, or maybe it's leading a small group, maybe it's volunteering somewhere um, for a nonprofit, maybe it's a fun run, maybe it's helping here at Harbor. I mean, all these people are volunteering their time to lead this organization and really impressed by the way of how well it's organized. Um, but you know, use your time you can when you're serving to just be a light for other people around you. you know, it's something I, I mentioned Jake a little bit ago. There were people that served him here, students, that looked out after him when he was here, that I, still, I see today, they're adults now, right, and they're 23 years old. But I can tell you, when they would come around, the people that served him and kind of looked after him, I mean, he just light up. It meant so much to him that they cared enough for him that they would help him out, right? All of you have that person that y'all look up to, every one of you have somebody you look up to, and know that there are people looking up to you because you're a leader in your school and you're a, a, you know, a really scholarly person, really smart, you're really good in the, in the band or on the football team or on the basketball, whatever it is, there's somebody that looks up to you. So just be kind to them because I promise you it means something to them and you'll be glad you did. On leadership, um, I've been fortunate to serve in a bunch of different uh, leadership capacities, but the thing I figured out, that probably the best qualification for leadership is to listen. I'm not very good at listening, but I try. But what you find out is you, you learn a lot and you can get different viewpoints. So when you're, when you're leading, it's not about telling people to do, it's about leading. It's about being the guy that helps or gal who puts it all together, who helps to organize and to get other people's ideas and to implement that to meet whatever the group's goal is. They say it's about listening more than you speak. Um, it's why that, you know, you hear the statement, you have two ears and one, and one mouth, because you're supposed to listen twice as much as you speak. I think that's true today. One thing about leadership, though, that I found out over my time, and my wife will tell you this, leadership's about serving, but it's also about knowing when to say no. You can't invest all of your time or talents in something. You have to stay in balance somewhat. My dad told me, um, to be a good leader when I was a kid, if I wanted to succeed, the first thing you do is show up, be dependable, be present, 
and do more than others do. Just do your best and be on time and be dependable. I would encourage you to write down, this is something, this is one of my challenges for you guys today is, you've heard, you may not have heard this before, if you haven't, you need to hear it. Each and every one of you today, before you go, before you get done with this week, write down some goals for yourself. Right now, you're just living day to day and trying to get through school and get through life or whatever. Write down your goals of where you want to be this time next year, where you want to be by the end of high school, where you want to be maybe when you're 25, and keep that. Most of y'all keep it in your phone. I would keep it on paper. But keep that and look back at it from time to time and see what you can do to try to achieve your goals. The goals are going to change some. You may meet some goals and you want to meet some others. But go ahead and, uh, and write those things down. If you don't, you won't pay attention to them. But write them down. Put them in the notes on your, Apple, on your iPhone or whatever. I think that's helpful. Um, character, which is, my, in my opinion, the most important pillar of them all, is underpinning for everything else you do. Your character defines who you are, not how you're born, not something you're unable to control. It's about how you choose to live your life. My grandfather on my dad's side told me when I was a kid that you only have your handshake or your name, or you only have your word and your name. Your name's given to you, right? So all you have is your word. It's really about you know, trustworthiness and reliability. I own a company, as they said, a company called City Title and Closing. We handle real estate transactions and loans on real, in Northwest Arkansas, but all over the state as well. We handle literally billions of dollars every year coming in and going out. Not our money, it's other people's money, right? It's extremely important that everyone that works for me be of impeccable character. And that's what we look for when we're going to hire somebody. We, want, we, we have on our walls our core vision and, statement, and mission statement. The first two things we have on there are int integrity and truth and trust. We continue to preach to our people that it's our job to do the right thing every time, even if it hurts. If we mess up, we're not going to blame it on somebody else. We're going to own it. We're going to fix it. We're going to pay for whatever it takes, right? Um, you can't compromise or maybe not work on your scholarship from time to time. You can choose to not to serve at times. You can choose not to lead at times, but you can't ever compromise your character. If you do, it's a long way back. I have personal experience with some friends that have done that, um, and it's, it's, it's something you can't get back. So I would keep that close to your heart. Your character shows up every day in how you treat others, how, how, you, about, how you go about life. It's always on display. So as I said earlier, just try to be a light to others around you. Citizenship doesn't mean membership in a community. It does, but not in the context of what I'm talking about. Being a citizen is a member, being a member of the community doesn't make you a good citizen. What we're talking about is good citizenship. It's about being a positive force in your school, in your community. It's about being empathetic, respectful, compassionate, respecting diversity, being inclusive. I know you hear those words all the time. You hear them on the news every day. But it's really about interacting with everyone you can, about getting different viewpoints, about achieving a common goal, about improving the current situation. It's about leveraging your God-given talents, of which you guys have many, in a way that you contribute to the situation you're in and to others around you. I know some of you probably think, yeah, 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 I don't have time for all that. You're probably right, unless you maintain balance, right? And that, it's a challenge for me every day. So I have a question. And the parents, this is you also, your parents, grandparents, family members, whatever. Raise your hand if you have a cell phone. All right? Keep your hand raised if you have social media on your cell phone. Right? Okay. You can do it now, you can do it later. Pull out your phone, swipe right, if it's an iPhone, for example, swipe right and go down to screen time. I have to do this periodically. My wife reminds me of it every once in a while. Look at how much time you spend a day on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it is. Maybe you're looking at somebody's, somebody's best photo they've ever taken, whatever, right? Um, it's probably been run through a filter anyway, so what, why would I look at it? But Figure out how you can take that time. I realize it's somewhat valuable, don't get me wrong. I'm not that old and grouchy that I don't think social media has a, has a use, but look how much time you're spending on your phone doing stuff that's really not productive, not making you better, not making your, your, your friends and, and people around you better. Use some of that time. I know I sound like an old grouchy guy, but again, I have to do that myself. Um, that being said, I'm super proud of you guys. Um, I've, Looking forward to seeing what you guys have in store for y'all the next few years here at Harbor. We still get to come back and, and see some games and see some stuff that goes on here at Harbor with our son. Um, I'm looking forward to you guys getting out of school and replacing old guys like me. Um, obviously, with, with y'all are so much smarter and so much more talented uh, than, than my generation, in my opinion. Um, but you're all off to a great start. Again, congratulations on your achievements. Best wishes on many more achievements. and. Uh, 
Thanks for having me. I now have the privilege of welcoming and introducing our second guest speaker for tonight, who began his career as a mathematics teacher in Arkadelphia. After several years, he has found his way to Harbor High School and has been the principal here since 2018. His hobbies include working outside and spending time with his children. Please help me welcome Dr. Paul Greep. Well, thank you for the opportunity to say a few words, and I will be brief. First, I want to just say to our new inductees how proud we are of you. I speak for the faculty of Harbor High School to say that, you know, the achievement that you have earned to be able to be inducted to National Honor Society wasn't easy. It took a lot of work, and it, it's, it's just, uh, we're just very proud of you. Second, I want to say how proud I am of the officers and of Mr. Noakes. Um, they do such a great job of putting this together. And again, this is not something that we did, it's something that our students did. And again, it just really shows of their leadership. So again, we're extremely thankful for their leadership uh, and we're very proud of you. As I was thinking about what to say today, um, you know, it's, as you know, it's, it's just a crazy time in our country and in our world. Pandemic, wars, all of that. I started thinking about words that were uttered over 50 years ago by President Kennedy. He said, ask not what your country could do for you, but what you can do for your country. Now think about that for a minute. Ask not what your country could do for you, but what you could do for your country. And then reflect about the four pillars of National Honor Society and how they connect and how they're applicable for the work that you're getting ready to do, not only here at Harbor High School, but as you take those next steps in life. Life is about service. You know, you know that, and so do I. Imagine a world without service to others if we were all just about ourselves and we never gave. It'd be a dark world, a more difficult world. But you can be that light by giving to others and putting others first. And really, that brings you so much joy because you realize it's not about getting the gift, but it's often about giving the gift. And then you think about leadership. It takes courage to give. It takes courage to step out and serve other people. But again, imagine the cost if we didn't do that. Your scholarly activities here at school and the work you've done to this point have put you in a position to be able to make good choices and to chart that path of greatness, not only for you, but for our school, our community, and our, and our world. I often say this, Harbor High School is a great place, but this is not my school. This is your school. What I love about National Honor Society is that I have a spirit of wanting to say yes. And I think about the, the ideas that National Honor Society have brought to my office, have brought to my administrative team, they're well thought out, and, it, and it's done in a spirit to make our school better and to make our students better. And you'll hear about some of those activities um, in just a few minutes, but I challenge you as new inductees to not just view this as something you're going to put on a college application, because if that's all that you get out of this, we've all lost. Our school has lost and you've lost because the greatest joy is knowing that what you can do is step up with your vision with your plan and with your work ethic, great things can happen and we all benefit. So that's really my charge to you, is to think not what can your school do for you, but what you can do for your school and for others. So again, thank you for the opportunity to say a few words and we're extremely proud of you. Thank you. Thank you to our guest speakers tonight for saying a few words. Now, as your name is called, please follow the direction of the ushers and come onto the stage to receive your certificate. And bring the sticky note on your chair with you.
Shay Acosta. Caleb Allen. Taylor Bond. Margaret Baker. Lane Barnes. Caroline Boyd. Holland Briggs. Jacob P. Brown. Olivia Brown. Brayden Campbell. Creighton Carney. Baylor Cartwright. Aaliyah Cashin. Leah Colt. Gabriella Sanobio. Cambry Clausen. Corbin Cobb, Blakelyn Combs, Jacob Combs, Mackenzie Combs, Aiden Coperland, Emily Danford, Addison DeShazo, Norma Diaz, Walter Diaz, Lindsay Dodson, Noel Dominguez, Abigail Fan, Emily Freeman, Gerardo Gonzalez Naranjo, Austin Grubb, Maggie Hammontree, Myra Hampton, Emma Hankins. Ariana Hernandez, <laughs> Hannah Holt, <laughs> Lauren Horsey, Linda Huggins. Haley Hernandez, Megan Killen, Connor King, Jaron Land, Phoebe Lee, Emma Livingston, Ruby Masias, Matthew McCann. Jasmine McDonald, Tucker McKinley, Claire Meyer, Anna Grace Miller, Will Mitchell, Jessica Montezuma, Mia Morales, Carter Moss, Laurel Mountain, Riley Nichols, Hannah Oakley, Kimberly Ortega Alvarez, Carlos Pacheco, Callie Parrish, Emma Paraway, Kimberly Pereira, Tori Pinalto, Blakely Pope. Austin Kessinger, Daniel Rivas, Yannery Sanchez, Ethan Bunch, Mazzy Hatch, Saray Mota, Kylie Allred, 
Gustavo Moreno. Marilyn Gonzalez. Wilson Shanks, Allie Shanks, Rebecca Seigel, Taylor Schultz, Peyton Schlegel, Bentley Schurz, Grayson Sanders, Jeb Sandifer. Emma Claire Shockley. Nora Shatondi. Garrett Shigley. Jane Tucker, Vanessa Tabar, Amelia Thiessen, Anna Claire Stubbs, Andrew Satakis, Hannah Weiler, Allison Williams, Seth Whittle, J.C. Weatherford, Taylor Tyndall, Molly Tyndall, Jesus Isbal, Congratulations to all of our new inductees. And now, please welcome our sponsor, Mr. Charles Noakes, who will offer congratulatory remarks to the new members. I believe that the road you are on determines your destination. Congratulations to our new members for the road of excellence that you have set for yourselves by becoming members of the National Honor Society. Knox, great job. Really appreciate that. Bree, your leadership has risen to the challenges of this year you have provided more service opportunities for our members, both here at Harbor and in the community, than any previous year. You have worked to support the culture of excellence at Harbor High School. Congratulations on a job exceptionally well done. Join me in appreciating these officers, please. New members, you have already demonstrated academic excellence, and you've demonstrated good character. Now you are stepping into another significant realm of leadership. That is by accepting this opportunity to enhance your leader skills through acts of service to your school and to your community. Ray Cock, founder of McDonald's franchise once said, the quality of a leader is reflected in the standards they set for themselves. You will not always win. You will not always be right. But it is the courage to continue that counts. I am more convinced than ever 
that culture is defined by words. And those words then are translated into action. In that context, National Honor Society challenges each of you to a culture of excellence. Thank you. I'd like to thank our advisor, Mr. Noakes, and the officers of the National Honor Society for their hard work in organizing this year's induction ceremony. Please join me in thanking them with a round of applause. Thank you all for attending our National Honor Society induction ceremony. New members, please listen to announcements to be notified of your first club meeting. We'll explain membership requirements, begin officer nominations, and allow new members to give feedback and how to get involved in our current projects. Thank you for attending the 2022 induction ceremony. If you received a blank certificate without your name on it, you can come to the stage and we'll give you the one with your name on it. You guys can head out to the PAC lobby for a reception, and again, thank you for coming. <laughs>